Welcome to First Reading, the Old Testament Lectionary Podcast. I'm Tim McNinch. And I'm Rachel Wren. The first reading for August 15th, 2021 is 1 Kings 2, 10 to 12, and 3, 3 to 14. And it is Tim's turn to guide us through the context, language, pitfalls, and preaching potential of this text. So, so what's going on here, Tim? It looks like the lectionary cuts out a pretty big chunk of chapter two, am I right? You're very perceptive. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, this reading picks up the death of King David and Solomon's succession to the throne and then jumps to Solomon's prayer for wisdom, which is the main part of the reading in chapter three. It's kind of a feel good story that elevates Solomon as, as a good benevolent monarch, not interested in personal gain, but first and foremost in wise leadership of God's people. Hmm. Solomon's another one of those ambivalent figures in the Bible with, with two very different presentations of him in the extended text. The reading this week picks up the sort of pro-Solomon thread hmm. for the most part and jumps over a big chunk that hints at his less rosy side. Most of chapter two traces Solomon's ruthless assassination of all his political rivals and his strategic marriage to a daughter of Pharaoh which are foretastes of his political schemings and collection of foreign brides that come later in the story. Yeah, so he's he's also criticized elsewhere for accumulating wealth and horses and chariots and kind of takes on the family business of his father-in-law, Pharaoh, and enslaves his own people into conscripted labor, right? Yes, and, and you might remember that Israel and Egypt have a little, they have some history. They do. <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> yes, it's complicated. Uh, indeed. But in this week's reading, Solomon's wealth is not seen as a fault, but as a divine gift, mm. something that God showers on him precisely because he didn't ask for it. Okay. Okay. So, so what you're saying is this story about Solomon's request for wisdom is just one side of his story. So do you think preachers should change how they use this text in light of that bigger picture? Well, I think it should at least have an impact on how preachers approach this text. Mm. I always want to encourage preachers and interpreters to see the Bible more like a conversation that's hosted by the Holy Spirit mm. than as a monolithic divine word that's all in simple harmony. Mm. There's, there's a lively debate in the Bible about how to evaluate Solomon as a king. And I don't think we necessarily need to take sides in that debate. Instead, we can listen to the insights of each perspective and consider how they impact our own lives and our own understanding of God and the world. I mean, even in the tidied up selection that the lectionary gives us this week, there are still some vestiges of that debate. Hmm. For example, the end of verse 3 notes that Solomon worshipped at the Bamot, the high places, the sacred sites in Israel that were not authorized by God, at least according to the Deuteronomic tradition. Hmm. And the text paints this as a kind of a blight on Solomon's record. There's also a big if in verse 14. <laughs> I will give you all this if you walk in my ways and keep my commands, which makes room for the later critique that would argue that Solomon wasn't consistent in following all of God's ways. Okay, so that second thread is shot through even in this text, too. Huh? Mm -hmm. It is, it is. And, you know, I'm not trying to say that a preacher should make their whole sermon about this debate over Solomon's legacy. Really? Why not? You don't think that would go over well? <laughs> well, it, maybe not. And it's really <laughs> not the it's not the point of the passage, right? It's just mm. something that we should have in mind as we approach the text. Mm. Um, but I would advise preachers and interpreters of all kinds to recognize that there's more to Solomon's story than the kind of celebratory lionization that's characteristic of this week's reading. Yeah, fair enough. So, so what do you have at the heart of the text for this week then? Okay. Well, the pericope tells of a dream that Solomon had when he was worshiping at Gibeon. In the dream, God told him to ask for anything and God would give it to him. If you're familiar with this story, you'll probably know that Solomon asks for wisdom. But here's an interesting bit that comes from reading the Hebrew. The word wisdom isn't in the story. Oh. <laughs> and the word wise as an adjective only appears once, um, but not in Solomon's request. It's in God's response to Solomon. Mm. What Solomon actually asks for is a lev shomea, mm. a listening heart. Mm. 
in order to judge well and to be able to understand right and wrong. Nice. So here in this passage, Solomon represents the ideal leader. And I, I kind of find it fascinating that the leadership quality that's most elevated here in the story is the ability to listen well, to listen with discernment, to have a lev shomea, a listening heart. And I think there's definitely a preaching point in there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've, I've beat this drum off enough on this podcast that, of course, it's not surprising to hear me say that lave is, of course, the place of both emotion and mind. So mm-hmm. to have a listening heart is a really fulsome, complicated, rich thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and listening itself in the biblical text is connected to wisdom, too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to downplay the wisdom piece here. Sure. After all, God is pleased with Solomon's request and offers to give him a wise chacham uh, and understanding navon heart in verse 12. Yeah, it's, it's also worth noting that in this passage, the kind of wisdom or discernment that Solomon's after is, is an ethical discernment. Mm-hmm. It's about being able to perceive good and evil. Sometimes we think about political wisdom as the ability to you know, shrewdly work the system mm-hmm. to your own or to your party's own advantage. But the kind of wisdom Solomon's talking about here, or the kind of uh, discernment, listening, is the ability to make ethical judgments between right and wrong. Hmm. That's a really important distinction. And I, I think it's one that we all sort of long for in our political leaders and, and find to be really lacking in much of modern government and, and politics. Yeah, yeah. And ancient politics, for that matter. Sure. I mean, most of the Book of Kings is about how rulers perverted ethics and justice for their own gain hmm. and how it caught up to them in the end. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so do you have specific advice for preachers on taking up this story in a sermon context? Yeah, yeah. Well, at its core, I think this is a story about leadership values. It paints the ideal leader as one who pursues ethical discernment through the skill of careful listening. Mm. And it portrays God as being pleased with that kind of ambition. Mm. Whether or not Solomon actually lived up to that ideal is the ongoing debate of the Book of Kings, right? Mm. But it lays out a value here that applies to how we choose our governmental leaders, and just as much about how we ourselves lead in whatever context we, where we have influence. I think that a sermon on this text could encourage a congregation to take a step back from the political power games and culture wars and all of that, and to consider how we can pursue the kind of influence in the world that leads by listening, Mm. which is a highly, highly underdeveloped skill these days. I think that's really important. I think you make a really important distinction at the end here that bears sort of fleshing out a little bit more because you talk about wanting ethical decision-making in leaders, Mm -hmm. and that could get twisted depending on our definition of ethics. You can have people on both sides of the aisle that are determining their leaders are making ethical decisions and have the other person on the other side of the aisle be absolutely, no, 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 that's not. But the way you suggest leading into ethical decisions is through listening. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a really important distinction there, I think. A lot of the moralism that we see in both society at large, but also in churches, is the kind where people have their own opinions about things, and it's a very vocal <laughs> approach yeah. to leadership. Yeah. Whereas what is prized, in this text at least, is a kind of listening that is attentive to the various perspectives that are coming out in order to make smart decisions. And you know, following this particular text are the series of stories about Solomon's own mm-hmm. wisdom, Mm-hmm. where he's able to um, not just uh, come in with a predetermined answer, but attend to the specifics of the situation before him mm-hmm. and make wise decisions, basically mm-hmm. playing out the kind of Lev Shomea that he asks for in this passage. Yeah, lovely. Well, thanks, Tim. I think that this could be a really powerful sermon to give. Uh, um, I know preachers that sometimes sermons on politics can feel very fraught, but I don't know, friends. I think a sermon on a listening heart, a lev shomeach, could be beneficial in just about every context I can think of. So, so take this one up and, and run with it. We'd love to hear how it goes. If you leave us a comment on Facebook or on our website, give us some feedback about 
ways you think the podcast could be improved or places that you found it to be absolutely beneficial, we'd love to hear that. If you have found it beneficial, maybe think about sharing it. Bring it to your grandma the next time you go visit. She doesn't need more flowers. Give her first reading podcast. <laughs> or give her flowers, too. She'd probably appreciate both of them. <laughs> We want to send a big thanks to Trinity Lutheran Seminary at Capital University for supporting us through a generous grant. And a big thanks to you for listening. You're the ones who make this fun, so we appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Rachel Wren. And I'm Tim McNinch. Happy preaching and happy listening. Ha! <laughs>